My heart is to see God's people full of passion and the fire of God, hungry for His presence on a daily basis, full of His power and having a positive impact on the world and those around them, living a life of freedom and victory. This is Running With Fire. Thanks for joining me today. And I want to look at an area that I think affects all of us in the course of our lifetime. And I wonder whether today it applies to you. Are you facing a difficulty, a trial, a challenge? You may even call it a mountain that just seems insurmountable. It looms larger than yourself. And you're looking at this situation today and you may be thinking, man, I don't know if I can get through this. I, I'm not sure I can survive. This is too much. I remember an experience in my life, well, at least one that comes to mind right now, where I thought I was really being pushed right to the edge of a cliff. And if I was pushed any further, I was just going to tip off the edge and really go into a pretty bad sort of a situation. I felt like maybe some of you today, that this mountain I was facing, this obstacle, these circumstances were just too difficult to handle. So what do you do? What do I do when we face these problems, these struggles, and we really do think we may go under. It's very easy in those times to quit, to give up, just let yourself be defeated and call it a day. Maybe even crash out, go under, resign, whatever it might be. I want to really encourage you today. I hope that this message is going to fill you with tremendous hope. Hope what? Hope that your situation isn't impossible because in fact it's not. You are indeed bigger than the giant you may be facing, especially if you have God on your side. And so in this message, I'm hoping to fill you with hope and give you some real keys and I believe some real strategies that can help you through whatever you may be facing today. So please stay tuned and I trust fresh hope will begin to fill your heart. In fact, the God we serve is called the God of all hope. If anyone can give you hope and encouragement and strength today, it is God. And I hope that will happen through today's message. New Zealand and Beyond Conference is here again in two cities, Auckland and Christchurch. New Zealand and Beyond, register now at NewZealandAndBeyond.com. How, how do you wrap up what we've heard over the last few days? There's just so much that we've heard, that we've received, that we've enjoyed. But uh, So how will we get the job done? We want to reach New Zealand. We want to reach nations. We want to build our churches we want to fulfill our calling. We want to see our ministries advance and progress. And sometimes, you know, even at the end of a uh, conference like this, it can all look a little bit too daunting, a little bit too difficult. Around 520 BC, the Jews had returned home to Jerusalem after 70 years in captivity. Everything had been destroyed. The place was in ruins. And they had to start everything from scratch, rebuild their homes, build the temple, the city walls. What happened is they started the project, they got underway, but then they abandoned it. I wonder if you sometimes feel like abandoning the project that you know God set you on course to do, but you know, it just gets so difficult that you know, there's almost a pulling back. 20 years later, Haggai and Zechariah called for the rebuilding of the temple. And, uh, but their numbers are small, the efforts seem feeble, and the situation seems hopeless. Maybe you're facing something like that. It may not be in ministry right now. It could even be in a family situation or financial situation. But then God spoke. And I want you to turn with me to Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 for a verse of Scripture that I want to speak from today. It's not new to you. It's probably old, but hopefully I can just bring some angles on it that you might find Helpful. Zechariah 4 and verse 6, it says this. So he answered them, this, you know, they're wondering how this is all going to be done. He answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Why don't you say it with me? Not by might, 
nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Verse 7, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you'll become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. This is the word of the Lord to, why don't you put your name in there? Whatever your name is. This is the word of the Lord to Tark. This is the word of the Lord to John and Mary and Fred and Harry and whoever else is here. Not by might, nor by power, by my spirit, says the Lord. And, uh, you know, the temple we know was rebuilt. And there's a, the first thing I think we can learn from this is that the will of God for our lives and our churches will never lead us to do what can't be done. You know, what, what God calls us to do, the task He gives us, He'll give us the strength to do it. Whatever He calls us to do, it must be something that can be done. I think that is good news. Because every so often we get asked to do things and you get asked to do things and you think, I don't know if I can do this. But if God's asking you to do it, it can be done. I want to share with you four ways to live dependent on the Spirit's power. Four ways to put Zechariah 4, 6 into daily practice. Are you ready for this? All right, number one is chill. Slow down. Pause, stop. Tell the person next to you, chill. (laughs) Tell the person on the other side, just chill. You know, sometimes we, (laughs) sometimes we need to just chill out, slow down, pause, and realize that human effort and all our striving and all our struggling and all our stressing will never get the job done. And uh, one of the reasons I love Zechariah 4 verse 6 is that it's one of the reasons a favorite of mine is for years and years and years, I've been full-time minister, I don't know about, oh gosh, must be about 30 odd years now. I started very young. It's about three, I think, or four. <laughs> started very young. And uh, over those years, I have tried so hard to please God. I've tried so hard to to serve God, to to work hard for God, and I've done everything that I, I can. And what I love about this verse is it takes the focus off me, you know, not by might and not by my power, but and puts the focus onto God by my spirit, says the Lord. And I find that very releasing and very encouraging. I'm facing a situation right now. And I've said to God, I just even recently, I said, God, I can't do this. God, I, I don't need another challenge in my life. I, my plate's full, you know. I've got too much on already. And I was, st- you know, h- hassling over this and wondering about it. And in the middle of it all, God spoke to me so clearly from heaven. And he gave me this exact words that he gave to the Jews in 520 BC. And it's almost like he shouted from heaven. I can remember being in my lounge and praying. It's almost like the the, the word of the Lord came and said, Tate, you're worrying all about this and how are you going to do it? But I want you to know it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And it's almost like like God said, Tate, you just chill, slow down, Pause and watch me. Watch what I can do by the power of the Spirit. It's like God is saying, this is not going to be done with great stress and strain and effort, but it's going to be accomplished by my Spirit. I will partner with you. I will do the lion's share. You're going to have to do your part, but I'll do the lion's share. And brought me to a place of peace and faith. The Word of the Lord began with a negative. Not by might, nor power. You know, the negative emphasizes the total insufficiency of human strength and resources to do God's will. And sometimes we have to understand the negative before we seek the positive. We don't look for the answer. We have to know what won't work before sometimes we can find out what will work. And so God says, now let me tell you what won't work. It's not going to be by your effort. 
It's not going to be by your human ingenuity and by your intelligence and by your hard labor and your struggle. It's not going to be by those things. And then he says, but how it is going to be, let me show you, it's going to be by my spirit. We have to realize what will not accomplish God's will before we can understand what will accomplish His will. And friends, I believe for many of us, it it takes sometimes decades of laboring before we get the revelation. You know, some of you are looking into the future and you've got challenges on this hand and that hand and you're, you're wondering, man, ha, 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 can I do this? The answer is, no, you can't. You actually can't do it. But with God helping you and partnering with you and a spirit in you, you can do it. Not by might means that God's will will not be accomplished. That might actually speaks here of strength, human resources. It speaks of wealth, ability. But guess what? It's often translated army army. So with God, numbers is not always the key to success. It's not the defining point of being successful. And uh, remember with Gideon, you know, God says, hey, actually, your 32,000 men is too many. I want to cut it down a bit. I want to get rid of a few. Your army is too long. Come with me to just have a look at Psalm 33, verse 16, because this may help you. Sometimes we worry so much about numbers. Have we got the people we need? Have we got enough staff? Have we got enough people? Have we got enough leaders in our midst? You know, look, we're lacking here, and we can be discouraged by that. But verse 16, we read this. It says, No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. And so it's, uh, it's not uh, the army, the size of your army, or the manpower, or the resources that you've got behind you that is the key to success. You know how much a church accomplishes, I believe with all my heart, is not always proportional to its size. Don't let the size of your army, or your church, or your group, or your ministry dictate what you can or can't do. I have a personal goal, and my goal is I want our church to punch above its weight. I want us to do more than we should be able to do. And, you know, God can help us to do this by the power of His Spirit. And when you realize that serving God is not by might nor power, you won't be limited by resources. You won't be limited. You won't let numbers dictate what is possible. Five loaves and two fish fed 5,000 people. That's all they needed. The jawbone of an ass slayed 1,000 Philistines. Even if you think you're an ass, you can still accomplish a lot for God. Just be available to Him. Make yourself available and let Him use you. I, I love the Moravians. I read a bit about them, but they had a group of just 600 people in their community. 600 people, that's all. Guess what? They send out 70 missionaries from that group, a feat unparalleled in missions history. Never been done before. A church of 600 children or a group of 600 should never been, have been able to do what they did. But friends, by depending on the Spirit's power and God working with them, He gave them success way beyond what they should have been able to do. I want to say to you, punch above your weight. Do beyond what you think you should be able to do. In a missions class, Herbert Jackson told how as a new missionary, he was assigned a car that they couldn't start unless they pushed it. That's good, eh, for a missionary, you know? Use all your energy starting your car. And he devised a plan. So he went to the local school, got permission to take some children out of class and had them push the car off. So that's what he would do. And so as he made his rounds, he'd either park the car on a hill or leave the engine running. He did this for two years, push starting, or parking on the hills, leaving the engine running for two years. Then ill health, not surprisingly, forced the Jackson family to leave and a new missionary took over. New missionary, when Jackson proudly explained to the new missionary how he got the car started, he thought he was quite smart. The man just looked under the hood and he said, why, Dr. Jackson? The only trouble is this loose cable. (laughs) He gave the table a quick twist, got into the car, pushed the switch, and the engine roared into life. 
For two years, Jackson had labored when the power was there all the time. But the problem was, friends, it's, it was, there was a loose connection. The power was able to, one wire was able to start the car, but only if it was connected to the power supply. Friends, you and I, we can serve God every day, push starting the car. Push starting our ministry, push starting uh, uh, the things that we need to do, or else we can take a different approach, start the car by turning the ignition because we are connected to our God and we are connected to the great power of the Holy Spirit. And friends, the challenge for you and I, I believe, is to stay connected to God at all times. The second point, if you want to depend on the Spirit or you know how, how to walk depending on the Spirit's power, number two is what I call stay under the cloud. Stay under the cloud. You might think, what on earth does that mean? Well, most of you know the story of the Old Testament. It was pretty cool. I wouldn't have minded being in the Old Testament days. They were out there in the wilderness and there was a cloud that would cover them by, by day and the fire by night. All they had to do was to follow the cloud and follow the pillar. And, uh, you know, when they, they got it in the morning, the cloud moved and they moved. And, and uh, they, if they did that, everything would be taken care of. I thought, I reckon I could have done that. I reckon I could be able to see a cloud move and follow it. And if they stayed under the cloud, guess what happened? They'd have the presence of God would be with them because the cloud spoke of God's presence. They would have the power of God. The Red Sea would be parted. You know, all the different things that needed to have water would come out from the rock. The power of God would be there. The provision of God would be there. They would get manna from heaven. And the protection of God would be there from the heat and the cold. All they had to do, friends, listen well, is stay under the cloud. And friends, it's still... A challenge for you and me today is to stay under the cloud and only move when God moves and only when God gives new vision and direction. And as He leads us, we will follow. It is too easy to get out from under the cloud. You know, and I think one of the things is a, is, is a conference can actually be the cause of you getting out from under the cloud. Because you come and you copy what someone else has done. You hear what Norm is doing and all this stuff and this, this the different thing, which is fantastic. You think, well, I'm going to do what Norm is doing. And uh, sure, do the power part of it, but you can't copy what someone else is doing unless the Holy Spirit is leading you to it. And I think a lot of people come out from under the cloud because they copy someone else who's being successful. You're not called to be a copy of someone else. You're called to be you. And when you are you, you will be the best you can ever be. A photocopy is never as good as the original. Be the original creation that God made you to be. Stay under the cloud. I'm pleading with you. Stay under the cloud. People move out, friends. There's, there's so much. You know, there's the whole church growth and the success of ministry. There is incredible pressure to move you from under your cloud of calling, under the provision, the protection, the power, the presence of God to shift you off course. And I reckon the devil works overtime in all of our lives, friends, to get us off center. Friends, I don't want to just hit the target. I want to hit the bullseye. I want to hit the dead center. And God say to me, Tark, you did what I called you to do. Sorry I got a bit excited here, but I believe what I'm saying. I believe it with everything of God. Because really what I'm talking about is hear God's voice. What is he asking you to do? And it's different to anyone else on the planet. Don't make your ministry or your church a copy of someone else, please. Because you're unique. No two thumbprints are the same. No person is, everyone's different to everyone else. So ask the person next to you, are you under the cloud? (laughs) 
You better say, I hope so. You see, just, just think for a moment. Great Norm, there he is. Where were you, Norm? Omaru. Omaru, Omaru. Okay, he's in Omaru. And so he gets his vision and he moves to Gisborne. Why does he move to Gisborne, friends? Because the cloud moved. And so he had to follow the cloud and stay there. And when he got to Gisborne, there's power, there's presence, there's provision, there's protection. It all happens. He's under the cloud. Joel Holm, I can't believe it. He pastors a church of 5,000 people, 1,500 leaders. And he quits. He resigns. Who in their right mind resigns a church of 5,000 people? Most of us are dreaming of that day. But he resigns it. And he goes into world mission and mobilizing and, and helping pastors, churches, even nations do mission better. And he comes to New Zealand and beyond for the seventh year in a row or one year in the middle that he missed out there when he missed the will of God. He didn't come that one year. <laughs> But he's, he, he's, why did he do that? The cloud moved. You think about that one. Cloud moved from 5,000 people in your church to a desk with a blank piece of paper and a pen. Not always easy to follow the cloud. It can take us directions. We think that doesn't make any sense. But I, I reckon if Joel had stayed in that church, probably be 50 people left now. Because <laughs> the cloud had moved. The cloud had moved. You've got to stay under the cloud. So what's God spoken to you at this conference? So you can't do it all. You can't do it all. You've got to hear what God has said to you. Joel said, I think, yesterday, this is a go and do movement. Not come and watch. Come and listen. Go and do. What has he told you? And what are you going to do? If you do nothing with what you've heard, I'm not going to say you've wasted your time, but you've certainly missed a great step forward in the ministry God has for you. What has he said to you? Do it. Go and do it. Move with God. I trust that today's message has already begun to fill your heart with hope. Thankfully, we serve the God of all hope, and He is able to fill your heart with hope to overflowing, not just to give you a small measure of hope, but that you can abound in hope. That's what actually it teaches us in the book of Romans. The key verse that we've been really focusing on today and we'll again continue with next week is Zechariah 4 verse 6, which is one of my favorite of all favorite verses. Of course, I have a lot of favorite verses, but not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I discovered this truth maybe about two decades ago when I had what I would call a a word from God, an encounter with God, call it what you like, but it's almost like the Lord spoke to me in absolutely no uncertain terms. And he said to me something like this, Tark, if you're going to do the things I've called you to do, if you're going to overcome the obstacles that you will face in the course of your life and your ministry, not only church-wise, but in the home, in the family, other circumstances, then you need to know and get one thing clear, you will never do it in your own strength. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. And so the key for me has been I've needed to learn to bring God into every situation and every circumstance. And I try and live out my life now, quite honestly, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that in myself, I can't do it. I can't accomplish it. I can't fulfill even the dreams that I carry in my heart. I can't get through the obstacles and difficulties that seem to come. I mean, even just, I think it was yesterday, a situation arose, something happened. I thought, God, this is, this is tough. This is difficult. And I really had to cry out to God. I had to engage his strength and his help, his spirit into that situation. And thankfully, God was merciful to me. And I remember thinking the next day, I thought, boy, God, you really did help me. I thought I was going to struggle a lot more with that situation. 
Friend, it is not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit. You don't have the strength to get through whatever you may be facing today, to accomplish the things you want to accomplish. But the good news is God is with you and He is willing to help you to be what He's called you to be and get through whatever obstacles you may be facing. If you don't know Jesus and would like to, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Dear Jesus, I thank you that you love me. You died on the cross for me. I confess my sins and ask you to forgive me. And now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Join me again next week. Next time on Running With Fire. We might say I can do nothing without God's power and spirit. But if we aren't praying, we're not really depending on the spirit. We're depending on our own effort, our own energy, and our own own strength. Individuals, churches who pray acknowledge dependence on God. Sometimes we can depend heavily on the Spirit's power in some areas of our lives and not in others. Sometimes we depend heavily on God for our ministry and our church. We pray and seek God, but then we don't with our families. We don't depend on God just as much in that area of our lives. And I think it's easy to be guilty of that one. And as we wait on God, He'll cause us to rise up with wings as eagles. Contrast that to ducks. I mean, you go down to Western Springs, you'll see ducks, don't you, eh? And, and they just, when you watch a duck, they just, it just looks so cool, just going across the top of the water. It's a bit like the eagle almost. You think, man, that's awesome. But guess what? Underneath the water, its legs, its feet are going flat out just to keep its head above water. You know, in our ministry and walk with God, I think I've been a duck more often than I'd like to be. Do you know when that happens? When I forget it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, and I just start working in the energy of the flesh. Sometimes we want to attack all the time. Sometimes we want to be on the front battle. Well, we don't want to be, but sometimes we're on the, the front of the battle all the time. And friends, we can't do that. It will wear you out. It will wipe you out. You've got to stop. You've got to pull back. I reckon one of the, the great lessons in successful ministry is learn which battles to fight. Because you can't fight them all. You can't fight all the battles. You can't do everything. But as you wait on God, He can show you. And friends, we all face mountains. But if we live depending on the Spirit's power, there's an unseen hand that will crush all opposition in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching Running With Fire with Tark Barna from Church Unlimited. For more great free content, visit runningwithfire.com. You can send us your prayer requests, stream online TV and radio episodes, and view blog articles. You can also connect with Tarkbana through Twitter for regular updates. Church Unlimited meets at two locations in Auckland, New Zealand. You're welcome to come along for a visit.